Alright, welcome back to the second part of this collection edition for the Tomb Raider, or for the collection edition of Tomb Raider. And now we have the Play Arts Kai of Laura Croft here. So let's go ahead and get started with and check a look around the figure. And for those of you who know what Play Arts Kai are, or who, who have Play Arts Kai, who have seen anything from Play Arts Kai, um, you know, the detail is very, very spot on when it comes to these figures. Um, we can take a little quick. Uh, let's see, tour around the figure itself to show some of the detail, which is very, very interesting and very unique. Uh, how they have the ruggedness and dirtiness that you would expect from this game. That Laura Croft, this is her origin story. Let's see if I can get uh, focusing a little bit better. Here we go. See, so, yeah, this is the pants leg. This there are so many different details like right here you can see uh like these are holes in her jeans or not jeans but say i guess you can say like cargo pants or something i just like it small even though they look kind of like a uh blemish of sorts but it's just such a small detail like that i find very interesting um and taking the tour up on the leg i mean not the leg excuse me the arms uh we can get a focus here we go you can see like the uh, dirt and discoloration, if I can get the focus. Sorry about that. Let's see. Oh, come on. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Some of the discoloration and stuff like that. Here we go. Like you can see, like this is really dirty here and there. Her whole arm is just knit and grit. It's like, it's not a clean looking figure, which is very cool. And there's a lot of paint applications that were done to this figure to make it look, I guess you can say spot on to the actual video game representation of Miss Laura Croft. Like it's even dirt here on top of her chest. And just everything about her is just, has that knit and grit to it. Like she's just been walling in, in the dirt and has had a pretty rough day, I must say. This isn't one of her best days. So next, let's go over the articulation. Let's start back at the legs here. All right, let's start the foot. And since the foot is on a ratchet ball joint, it can go about that far and about that far. It has like a normal range of articulation so go this far up and this far back nothing too extensive uh, extensive excuse me and here go the knees and these are double joint so they can go all the way back there's something I do I don't kind of like about the figure is this right here it kind of looks oddly shaped if you can see that let's see Um, it kind of looks like a peanut for her kneecap, but that's the price you have to pay with great articulation. Some pieces, in, it, in order to keep it kind of seamless without having like a big ball joint here, it, it's, it's a small complaint of mine. It's nothing too serious that should deter you from actually picking up the figure. Because if you had the figure bent this far back, um, you probably have like a pretty dynamic pose, so this little peanut of a knee joint won't really be an issue per se. But it's not a bad thing, especially if you own like a Revoltex and stuff like that, like you see joints everywhere. So it's not too bad. And let's see, let's make our way up to, oh, let's see. Now, there was a little issue with me setting up. This was a piece that was attached, if you can see that. Uh, let's see. This itty bitty piece right here was attached right here on her leg that kind of kept the gun in place or the holster in place and I don't know if you can see that Oops. but there's a little dab of glue that kept that in place but what it also did was kept this foot from this leg from being like hindering it so it didn't have much articulation in a ways that it does now 
so if you want more articulation in both legs, like th these legs, this leg had a fantastic articulation, and this one was very limited, especially in its back and forth motion. Um, it, it has the same ball joint system uh, in both legs, but this one was hindered by this, all right, and by this piece. So it's supposed to, let me see, go up. I think about here, if I'm not mistaken, or a little bit higher. But it, somehow it fell off. I don't know how mine fell off in particular. But I'm kind of all right with it because it kind of gives her, it gives her way more articulation than it does before. So since we are at the legs, the legs can go back that far until it hits her butt. It can go forward that far. Yeah, here we go. It can go forward about this far. And now since the, uh, it could do a nice split, very nice, but yeah, uh, being the fact that this is loose now, I kind of like the fact that this being loose, it's a little, I don't know, it's a little bit different, um, but that's just besides the point, if you want to take it off, um, I kind of wish I would have made this detachable some way, somehow, but this is my kind of, the one of my little nitpicks. And going up to the arms, we have full, get a hair out the way, 360. Let's close it a little bit. There we go. Full 360. The upper bicep can rotate all the way around. And the elbow joint is not double jointed, which I'm kind of surprised about. The elbow joint is not double jointed. But it is what it is. It's not a problem. And the hand is on a ball joint, so it has full 360 going around. And can bend pretty much like that, forward and back. So whatever position you have it in, you can just rotate it around. You can make it kind of sassy. Or like a cat, <laughs> if you would like. So... The waist articulation, there really isn't much, mo, uh, excuse me, much waist articulation. It, you kind of have like a little side to side wiggle, nothing too much. Um, upper chest articulation, she can go back that far and go forward that far. So most of your motion is going to come from the legs themselves because the waist piece here really is not much articulation. So we move uh, her cat hand. And her hair is on a nice little peg, so whatever position you want it in, you can get it out of the way. Her head can go, can look down that far, and you can look up about that far. It's a little, with a little bit of the assistance of the legs and the waist. And it is also a full 360. It is kind of stiff. Maybe, it, maybe it's just mine in particular. It has that stiffness, but um, I, I actually prefer it to be stiff so it won't flop around or anything weird. So, that is the figure itself. Next, we're going to look at the accessories that Miss Laura Croft comes with. Let's take a little quick look at the accessories. Now, I have looked at some of the accessories for the retail release, and if I'm not mistaken, everything is pretty much similar in the collection edition. Now, in the retail release, you may come with a stand. I'm not quite sure. I have to look it up again. You know. But uh, accessory wise, pretty much everything is similar. So let's go ahead and get started with the shotgun. And the shotgun, I do really like the shotgun because of all the different paint applications that are applied on here. Like, as you can see, Oh, whoops. As you can see here, you see like the wrap that is placed around the handle of the shotgun. And you have the yellow for where you would reload um, for your next shot. And it's very nice, uh, almost like a metallic gray, or as you could say, uh, gun metal gray for the pretty much the majority of the guns, which is very nice. Um, no real paint mishaps or anything with it, especially with such a small detail as this right here. You would think there would be a few paint uh, mishaps or something, but once again, Play Arts Kai is very, they do very well, very good detail work with all the accessories and the figures. So next is the 
pistol, but your pistol only has, say, two different color applications. It has this dark brown right here and this gun metal. Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah. There are no other paint colors. And you can almost, from afar, it almost looks like it's one solid piece. But it, it is just two different. It's a really dark brown and a gun metal gray once again. And next is the X, or the common pick, which this one has the most paint applications. Um, you can see the silver right here for its like worn down effect. And the black spots are gray where uh, the hook uh, attacks in or attaches. So very nicely detailed, very nice. Very nice indeed. And next is the bow, or excuse me, the arrow. I guess I'm kind of, kind of going out of order. But the bow has some fantastic detail. Like if you can see, uh, let's see. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's like, here we go. There's a little black marks just throughout here. And the feathers have like a, almost like a, a gradient. I'm not saying gradient, but it has like a nice effect to it. And the, I guess you'd call it a, a shaft. The shaft of the bow, or the arrow, has like different, like little black marks. I guess like the dirtiness, and I guess you can say, uh, I guess craft, uh, being that it's just crafted out of elements around her that Laura uses to craft a bow, or craft, yeah, craft the arrow. And you can see the little bow tip, or arrow tip, I don't know why I keep saying bow for. Um, if I can get that in focus, it's just a small little black tip on the arrow. Oops. So the next is the bow, and the bow is one solid color, or oh, there is some different colors here. It's a little bit, uh, I guess you say it's a lighter brown than the actual rest of it, but it's, it's a subtle difference. And it ha this has some elasticity, but I wouldn't go pulling this thing all the way back. Just the sheer fact it may break. Um, but it is some give to it, but nothing too too much. And I'm not sure if you can tell this little silver spot here, if that's an actual blemish, or if it's actually meant to be that way. But see, you luckily for this set of this, this figure and these accessories, blemishes work in the favor because it has that rustic look. That was where I was looking for rustic um, look to it, so it works in its favor. And she only comes with um, three additional hands. So she comes with five hands in total. And this is for the left hand, which has the, uh, I, I believe this is used for either a gun or the bow. I can't quite remember. The, the details are very sketchy. Well, I guess because I can't read Japanese, but it, once again, is very nicely detailed. It has that uh, nitty gritty look which is very very nice and our next one if I can pick it up come here here we go um, once again very nice now one of the there's one specifically made to hold the arrow and I can't quite figure out which one it is I'm still kind of having trouble doing that and then the rest are for the gun so I'm not quite sure which one it's supposed to be. But yes, that is the, the accessories. And something that's very interesting about this figure is, like I stated earlier, she has a... Let's see if I can pan up. Oh, sorry about the shakiness. Let me see if I can just straighten up. There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry about that little shakiness right there. Um, she has a holster here, which can the gun can slide in here, or the pistol, excuse me, and up top where the shotgun fits. The shotgun is a little bit snug, 
but it does go through. So you have to use a little bit of force to get it through, but it will go through. And since we're here, we can go ahead and show how the hand switch. And I would recommend that holding it right here at the ball joint would be the easiest place to get rid of our remote switch. Well, as you see, it didn't hold tight enough and that happens. So no fret, it just pops right back in. So if you can, just kind of make sure you have a firm grasp on the ball joint and shake, uh, shake a wiggle. And then the hand goes right on here. It should go on without too much force. Um, sometimes you'll feel a snap, sometimes you won't. It just depends on how it's going. But yeah. So she can hold things like the ice pick, which all accessories fit nicely in her hands. This is more of a pistol kind of hand. So let's see if we can get the pistol to fit in. There we go. If it will stay. It kind of wants to stay, but it kind of doesn't. But you get the whole idea of how it works. Nothing too complicated. So, that is the accessories. Put her gun back in a holster. Holster, excuse me. And next will be the final verdict, verdict of not only this figure oops, by itself, but the whole collection edition. That is, the whole, the whole Tomb Raider season collection edition are survival edition. So I'll be right back. Alright, so this is my final verdict of not only the player that's kind of Laura Croft, but the whole Tomb Raider Survival Collector's Edition. Oh, if you haven't picked it up, um, or if you haven't played Tomb Raider, I would recommend picking up this collection. It's one of my favorite collector's editions in a long, long while. For the sheer fact that you get a, a very awesome and very expensive, depending on where you look at it, a figure, which makes it worth the money. So when I bought it on Amazon, it was about, but when I, I picked it up from Amazon, excuse me, it was about uh, $27, but that was just me getting extremely lucky. And you can get it on the Xbox 360 for about 30, 40 bucks, depending on um, if you get it used or new. I want to say it's 50, 50 maybe 60 new, which still isn't bad. That's about the price of the game itself. Um, but for the PS3, for some reason, it's still $100. But it's still not bad for 100 bucks for what all you get. Um, especially if you haven't played the game. And also if you're a collector of player arts car or just collectors of figures and you want a very nice uh, Tomb Raider figure or World of Croft figure I would very much recommend picking up this figure so I will put links down below uh, get all down here or wherever YouTube decides to place it up here down here left right up down wherever they decide to put it nowadays uh, to a link to the uh, Amazon page if you can't find it on Amazon, you can find it on eBay, but uh, eBay can be a little bit expensive. But I think the worst maybe is like 60, 70 bucks, which still, once again, isn't bad. And also be careful if you buy it from Amazon, because I have originally bought this for the 360. And uh, it was missing the accessories. It came with everything else but the accessories. So Amazon is very nice about the return. So just if you don't have the accessories, or you're missing something, just return it, you'll get your money back and buy another one. So, once again, this has been Nerds Toys, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.